I love it. Most rock and roll country in the world. And you see it when you travel. We've been traveling all around the country now. It's been so much fun, you know, out in places like PE and, and Cape Town and East London and recently went to Durban, which was, which was a bit of a schlep for us. It was really hard because it was raining so much. And then, and then on, on top of the flight delays that you have to contest with, there's also like an overbooking, which is a problem, you know. I don't know if you know what overbooking is, but basically it's a, it's a, it's a legal process where, um, it's a practice rather, where, where airlines book more tickets than there are seats on the plane. So they book more, sort of like a taxi. <laughs> but then they don't let you get on when you get there. So they just hope you don't pitch up. He's like, please, please. <laughs> ah, yeah. Like, you know, that's what they do. And so we, we flying down to Durban and it was the funniest thing ever. We're standing in the queue, everyone's all fidgety in the line, looking at their watches and they call us forward. They're like, next, next, please, next, next, next. So we go to the counter and there's one of those women there with her glasses and her relaxed hair and she's there. And then she's like, uh, can I have your ID, please? And you're like, IDs, everyone puts them down. She's like, where are you flying? And we're like, uh, uh, Durban, please. She's like, Durban. <laughs> Durban. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you flying now? No, tomorrow we just, it's a practice run. <laughs> Are you flying? And we're like, yes, we need to fly now. Okay. It's just... And then she starts typing frantically. <laughs> Which I never understand, because when I book my tickets, all I need to do is click. It's click, 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 click. Joe, Joe, ah, that one. Click, ah, duh, duh, ah, that one. Click, and then it does it all for, and then she's there. I bet she wasn't even busy doing our tickets anymore. She's just like there, clicking. She's probably on like Facebook or something there, <laughs> updating her status. Yo, another one, another one, monsieur. I'm dead, 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 dead. Another one, here. Yo, dead, dead. You overbooking. Dead, dead. Oh, poke back. Dead, dead. You dead. Death by overbooking. Yo. Because of their faux pas, the airline is as kind as to upgrade us on the next flight to business class. They say, we're sorry about what happened. Here you go, business class. Oh, very, I love business class, you know. You get to go to a special lounge where everyone's very businessy. Yes. <laughs> no, it is, it is. Because when, you, when you're in business class, you, hear, you overhear conversations and they, they, they sound totally different, you know. You overhear people saying things like, yes, well, the mergers are, are coming along. I mean, if you look at the companies that are, you know, people walking around, well, I mean, if the numbers are right, then we'll definitely get that stock portfolio going. And you've got people walking there, you know, just, no, I'm in, I'm in the kids of this situation to make sure that uh, all the shareholders are, are happy. And uh, then we'll present to management and it's going to be a, <laughs> a key installment of what, okay. You know, you just, you hear like businessy kind of stuff. Whereas when you're in economy, it's just like a huge group of people. You generally overhear conversations like, I thought you put it in the bag. You said you put it in the bag. What? It was on the ta I asked you to put it tomorrow. Why is it not in the bag? <laughs> oh, wow. And so we're going through the airports and and then we go through security. And I, I love security in South Africa. It is the most chilled out security you will find anywhere in the world. It is, like South African security is just like, you know, we work on an honesty system in this country, you know? <laughs> the security guard, there's, he's there to enforce, but it's more on honesty. It's like, look, this, this is, it's up to you. This is the honesty place. This is where we all, we, all, we all admit to our sins. Come forward, come forward. Do you have anything to declare? You know, it's that, that type of place. Overseas, when you, when you come through customs, it's the craziest thing ever. You've you got to take off everything. You've got to take off your shoes and you take off your belt and you, you, know, you, you can't wear a jacket or a hoodie or a cap or anything. You've got to take off your rings and nothing, nothing, not even coins in your pocket. Even if you've got like a big filling, then you're in trouble. Then they, you know, and they'll be like, then you're like, but, 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 it's, but it's my teeth. And they're like, well, you're going to have to do something. You're going to, you know? And then like colored people are like, excuse me. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's great. Whereas in South Africa, I sometimes feel like these security guards don't actually know what their equipment does. You know, they're very chilled out about it. Because you walk through at airport security and you get there and the guy will be like, yeah, go, number four, number four. And then you go through and you stand there and the guy will be waiting. He'll give you that bucket and he'll be like, hey, what's in the bag? Like, what, what do you mean? In the, he's like, is there a laptop? <laughs> yes. 
out, out. Take it out, laptop out, out. Please, yeah, put it by itself, nah, put it there, yeah. Any other laptop, you're like, no, 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 huh? Laptop out. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. What did you do? Okay, there it is. Okay, and, and, and my gun? No, it's fine, it's fine, just, just the laptop. Yeah. Watching you. It's so much fun. And you walk through the metal detectors, which I swear either don't work or these people really don't understand them at all. You walk through metal detectors, and it's not just at airports, no matter where they are in this, in this country. You walk through a metal detector, a casino, a school, government institution, you'll walk in there, and then it'll, it'll just, it'll make that sound, but then I don't know if they know what that means. Because you walk through and be like, beep, 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 beep. And you see how security guards smile, because they get ready, because they're going to use the wand. They love the wand. You can see they wait the whole day, yes, my time has arrived. Excalibur, I call upon you. <laughs> it's like, what the hell's going on? Yeah, stand, just stand there, yeah. Pulls out his one, you know those black ones, just pulls them out. <laughs> okay, it's not, I'm sorry, I'm just, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't really do that. It would be cool if it did though. <laughs> Although it would be weird, it would be weird. You know, for like some guy from the township to have a lightsaber. <laughs> Wouldn't, wouldn't work at all though, it wouldn't. Wouldn't, imagine, wouldn't be like Darth Vader, it would be like Braveda. Ah, Bravi! It would have been the worst Star Wars ever if it was in South Africa, wouldn't it? Like the critical point, the, the, the moment that made the movie would never happen if it was in a township in South Africa. Because which guy from the township would claim a child after that many years? Guy would be like, Look. Yes, what is it? No, look there, it's your father. <laughs> <laughs> But it wasn't, it wasn't. Okay, sorry, go. I, I digress. The wand, the wand, the wand. Comes, <laughs> sorry. Comes out with the wand. And they always do that thing, you know, they go around. And we don't know what it's supposed to do or not, you know? <laughs> Any weapons? what was that for <laughs> even if I had something I'm not gonna tell you now obviously you have been defeated any weapons no oh, okay and that's it we like work on the honesty system in this country everywhere you go like I'd like to meet the genius who invented the honesty book ah oh, yes the honesty book yes the book of truth no one can lie when they write in this book whenever you visit someone at a townhouse or office complex we have the book of truth Fill in the book before you enter. Name, ah, yes. Surname, <laughs> Phone number and address. Reason for visit, PVT. We'll just do that, look at everyone on PVT, 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 PVT. PVT. And once I asked the security guard, I was like, what's the point of this? Why am I, why am I filling in this book? He's like, no, it's for security reasons. <laughs> so I figured that much, but what is, what is it about? It's like, it's so that if you can do anything bad inside there, if maybe you can steal or kill someone, then we can find you. <laughs> ah, of course. Because I wrote my real name and surname. The honest killer strikes again. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I was like, okay, and then I kill someone, and then what are you going to do? It's like, then you sit there, who can just phone you and tell you must come back. <laughs> yeah. Same time. I'm having the time of my life right now. I'm sitting there like, oh, oh, I see. And then what if, what if my phone is off? And he's like, then, then we can even leave a message, yeah? You can even send a please call me. Don't play here. Yeah. Don't play. <laughs> oh, oh man. I love it. It's so much fun. 
so we flew down to Durban, which was great. You know, airports are they're pretty standard. That's a nice thing about South Africa. We got world class airports, you know. Partially thanks to the, the, uh, the, the World Cup, flew into Durban. It's a very, very humid, very hot place, you know. Also very, very Indian. <laughs> no, no, it is, it is. Like, people are like, how can you say that? Because it is. It's, when it's hot, it's hot. When it's Indian, it's Indian. It's like, <laughs> it is. Which is a bit weird for me, because they go like, you know, when you land there, there's billboards everywhere. You go, welcome to KwaZulu Natal. You drive out the airport, welcome to KwaZulu Natal. You're driving down the highway, KwaZulu Natal. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> everywhere, kingdom of the Zulu. So they write, kingdom of, that's all they write about, KwaZulu Natal. That's not fair though, you can't call it KwaZulu Natal. Because obviously they didn't count the Indians first. Because <laughs> there are that many of them. You need to count. Because I, I, looked, I looked up the stats on Google and I found that Durban is the number one highest population of Indian people outside of India. Did you know this? Number one highest population of Indian people outside of India, which means the only place, the only place that has more Indian people than Durban is India. <laughs> That's a scary fact. That's a scary fact. It's true. That's like, because like, that, it, like if India is the factory, then like Durban's the factory shop. Like, <laughs> it's that big. So you can't just call it Kwazulu, the kingdom. No, you can't. If you count it, then it, you know, it should be fair. It should be mixed up, you know? It should be mixed up. It should be like Kwazulu, Namandia, Natal. Like, you know? I, I don't understand. Although knowing Indian people, they're smart. They're probably like, no, no, it's fine. Give them the title. Give them. Give them the naming rights. Give them the title. It's fine. No, no, we'll just take the land. It's fine. No, no. <laughs> have fun. Have fun, yeah? Oh, have fun, Shaka. Have fun. You think it's a joke, but there are that many. That is like one of the craziest stats I've ever read in my life. Because God forbid, if something were to happen to India, if something happened, a huge disaster, like you know in Japan, you see it can happen overnight, it can happen. All of a sudden the country's in danger. There's nuclear reactors waiting to explode. It could happen in India as well. You know, maybe a nuclear explosion or I don't even know if they really have big nuclear plants, but maybe it could be something else, like a, like a, like a bomb, a nuclear bomb, you know? Or even like a like a like a like a, a masala bomb, or like a <laughs> like a like a tikka bomb. Tikka, tikka sounds nice, doesn't it? Tikka bomb, yes. Well, that sounds like a, a sweet an Indian kid would eat, you know. Daddy, daddy, I want tikka bomb. No more tikka bomb for you. Last time you put tikka bomb in your sister's hair. No more tikka bomb. I want tikka bomb. No more tikka bomb. <laughs> no, masala bomb, sir. And you're thinking that's stupid, trip. It could happen. Because every country has a mad scientist. I mean, there's like one guy who's there with like a steaming pot of the hottest curry in the world. And he's like, <laughs> more, more. <laughs> Top your dick, I'm pouring out this curry. <laughs> and his sidekick is like, no master, please. No more spices, no more spices. <laughs> Let go of me. <laughs> and everyone dead, dead. Billion people dead. Everyone there, ah, we are all dead. <laughs> all dead. But tasty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like if that happened, if that happened, then, <laughs> then, then Durban would become the new India. There's no better place to start. Because Durban has, like in Joburg, we think, oh, we've got Indians. No, 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 we don't. Like here we got basic, basic, base level Indians. They said, we got, we've got governors, we've got Naidus, you know, uh, we've got Reddies and Chetis. Down in Durban, they've got, every, they've got every single kind. They've got Gujarati, they've got Hindi, they've, they've got like, it's like everyone, it's a huge mix. They've got, they've got like tall Indians, like super tall, like seven foot tall Indians. They've got like, short ones as well, stupid. I saw, I saw an Indian midget, an Indian midget for the first time in my life. You laugh, man, but you've never seen an Indian, an Indian like it was something my mind couldn't comprehend. I'm a polite guy, but I was like, <laughs> I'd never seen anything. It's like this high, and like, it was the craziest thing I've ever seen in the world. And I was like, I, I, I don't know. I was just like, I was just like, and this Indian guy came, he's like, hey, Trevor, watch the joke there. Share the joke, share the joke. And I was like, dude, look, look, it's an Indian midget. And he's like, well, he's like, hey, that's rude, man. That's rude, right? You don't call him that, right? It's not a midget, man. He just got a drop suspension there, though. <laughs> Durban, 
Japan is ridiculous. It's the craziest place in the world. I love it out there. Every kind, every single kind of Indian you can imagine. Every single they've got. They've got fat Indian people and thin ones and they've got light skinned Indians. So light, they look white. And they've got dark ones as well. But like dark, but like, yo, but like dark, like no, like dark. You know, like dark, like black, like black, but not even black, like black, black, like navy blue, like, you know? Like, no, no, you, like, you don't even, like they've got, yo. Like they've got, they've got Indians so dark, black people look at them and they're like, you, 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 you. Like it's, you don't even understand. Oh. And then they look, they look so dark, you think that they're black, so you speak to them in Zulu and you're like, yebo baba, gunjani baba. And the worst thing is Indians in Durban can't speak Zulu, so then they don't help, but then he's like, hey, we are, we are here. You're like, what the hell? The Zulus have Indian accents as well. It's just like, it's just a, you don't know what to do. It's madness. <laughs> Absolute madness. I love to learn. I love to learn about different people's cultures though, you know? I always believe the difference between ignorance and, and comedy as a whole is if you know a little bit, if you just show that, look, I've taken the time. And I try and learn, I try and learn. So I thought if there's this many Indian people, I should start learning some, some Indian phrases, you know? I was like, choose a language, then I was like, okay, well, Gujarati is a bit difficult. I'll go, for, I'll go for Hindi, you know? Communicate with the Hindu people out there, have my thing, you know? I started learning the phrases and stuff. I was there walking around practicing in the Miller, Miller there, I was, Mutsi. <laughs> to I was proper, you know, saying the stuff, real phrases. And I got to Durban, went up to people, went up to women, and I was like, <laughs> She was like, What you saying there? What you talking there? What language is that? What you, what you toss out something? See, your culture is not lost in you, I see. <laughs> the funniest thing. Someone said to me once, if you want to learn about another person's culture, the key is to immerse yourself in their way of living, which is what I do sometimes. I stayed in Durban for like a month and, you know, went and did everything. I was like, I was proper. I was turning into an Indian guy. I was just like, you know, I went where they went, did what they did, you know. And then I was walking around the streets with gel in my hair and, you know, <laughs> tight jeans and puma shoes. And I was like, yeah, you know. It's like, what kind? What kind, uncle? What kind? And I was that guy, you know rolling around, he even indulged in the food, because food tells you a lot about a culture, a lot, a lot about a people. And the one thing I wanted to find out was why Indian people speak so fast. And I've asked many of them on occasion, I've asked many, I've said, I said to them, why do you speak so fast? You know, you get responses like, we don't talk fast, what are you talking about? <laughs> My favorite was an old man, I said to him, I said, why do Indian people speak so fast? And he said, he said, we don't talk fast, you just listen slow. <laughs> well, thank you. Doesn't make sense, but thank you. And so I went, I went out on an excursion, an excursion of discovery. Went out to a place called Blue Lagoon, out in Durban. Ah, some of you are familiar with the place, yes, yes. Went there to get myself a traditional bunny chow. You know, a ah, quarter loaf of bread filled with curry. Mmm, delicious. I walked in there, the guy was at the counter, he's like, what you want? He's like, uh, could I please have a bunny chow? He's like, what bunny chow you want there? I was like, I don't know, what do you got? He's like, we got mutton, we got beans, we got chicken, which one you want? I was like, give me the mutton. He's like, okay, one mutton bunny there. What flavor you want? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, we got hot and we got hot, hot. <laughs> like, well, what's the difference? He's like, you'll know the difference. <laughs> Just take the hot one. I was like, no, 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 no. Don't you do that to me. I want hot, 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 hot. <laughs> He's like, okay, gave it to me. It smelled divine, I'll never forget. I bit into that bunny chow, I was like, mmm. It's just, oh, the spices and the aromas. and oh, mm, It just tastes absolutely... Hey, man, I was wondering, can I get a glass of water over there? This thing put in my mouth, right? Just give me something, 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 I don't want water, just give me something. Give me something like a yogurt, or a milk or something. Man, my damn tongue is burning up. Ah, oh, this thing's burning up. Ah. Some guy was like, hey, you from Chatswood? I'm not from Chatswood, my mouth is burning. My dear, my don't tell me from Chatswood, give me somebody. Finally understood. When you eat food that's that hot, you don't have time to talk, you need to breathe. It's ridiculous. And I learned. I was one with the people. It's amazing. 
And we went from Durban back to Johannesburg, flying up again. I love flying. We do a lot of flying, you know, in this, in this line of work. And there's a lot of people who do as well. And when you fly a lot, you start to notice more than just like the, the plane ride itself. You start to notice the subliminal things, you know. Like one thing that's great about South Africa is we've got world-class pilots, you know. One of the lowest incident rates in terms of crashes and, you know, pilot uh, error. And it's amazing. We've got world-class and you, you, you can see it. And they've got that thing, you know. They're world-class. They wear the shirts and they've got the square suitcases. I'm a pilot, yes. They've got the jaw and everything. They've even got the pilot voice, which I love, which is weird, because you'll see them walk into the plane and they can have whatever accent. They'll be walking and be like, no, no, you want to see it, you want to see the other one was coming to me, yeah. No, no, did he check, did he check the tire? Anyway, okay, you know, it's much fine. Let me, okay, hold on a second, let me just, yeah, I'll do that now. Let me just do that now. Boom. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, aboard this. Switch three, seven, two flights, flying from Durban to Johannesburg. Flight shouldn't be too long, taking off in a northeasterly direction, out on runway three. Just waiting for air traffic control to give us a go ahead. It's a balmy, a beautiful uh, day out in Johannesburg. Scattered on the showers, but it shouldn't be much of a problem. Slight turbulence that we might encounter, but it uh, shouldn't be too bad. We'll keep the seatbelts on at that stage. So uh, right now, all I need you to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Thank you very much. Doom, doom. Yeah, you like, ooh! Oh, pilot, ooh! Everyone's comfortable. They're like, yeah, my man, he knows what he's doing, you know? And always get spoiled by the air hostesses because it's almost like they don't practice at all, you know? They just memorize their lines. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I bought this canine that can fly. Please note that this is a non smoking flight. Like they're all non smoking. I'm just saying. But the pilots, the pilots are calm, they cool, you know, you get into the air, they start making useless announcements that you don't even care about, you know, just to give you that, that feeling that he knows what he's doing, you get up there as the seatbelt lights go, boom. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may have noticed, we've reached our cruising altitude, currently sitting at 23,000 feet above sea level, uh, cruising at about 720 kilometers an hour in the Boeing 737, one of our favorite planes in the Starflight Alliance uh, cre fleet. It's, uh, Beautiful sunny day up here. We might encounter a few bumps, but uh, nothing too hectic. Uh, the cabin crew will be taking care of you. In the front, we've got Esmeralda and Jonathan. In the rear, Simon, uh, Dupitzang, and uh, Ferrer. I'll be taking care of you. And uh, if you need anything, don't hesitate to call. I'll uh, let you know once we've begun our descent. Until then, please enjoy your flight. Thank you. Dun dun. Do you like? Oh yeah, pilot. Yo. My guy, my guy, pilot. It's cool, it's cool. I just, I just don't like the fact that they never let you know when something's gone wrong. It freaks me out because they trained to keep you calm no matter what's going on. And I noticed this because we hit turbulence coming into Joe where there were hectic storms and the plane started shaking and, it would, and you know, it wasn't like the calm turbulence. You know, that turbulence where people, you know, the knuckles get white when they're holding their, you know, because you know, people try and act natural in the plane. They'll be like, <laughs> and, then, and then they get to a point where they're like, You know, when that point comes, and like everyone is panicking, every, except the air hostesses, they're amazing. I love how they do it, you know? Like you'll hit the turbulence, and we'll be like, gah, 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 gah. things are falling, the bags are hitting the sides of the compartments, gah, 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 gah. people are panicking, and ex except they always, they just move through naturally. It's, it's, it's freaky, it's almost like the lower half is not connected to the upper body. Because they'll just carry on, and they'll, they'll be like, yes, yes, you guys. Mm -hmm. Would you guys like some coffee? Yeah, okay. There you go. Be careful, it's hot. Thank you. All right then. Anything for you, sir? Hmm? Yeah. Okay. Okay, then. Just pass me a, a apple juice. All right. Thank you very much. There you go. Would you like some ice? Nice. No, thank you. You know how they do it. And then the pilot has the nerve to come on. In the middle of the biggest storm ever, the plane is shaking, the wings are tilting slightly upwards. You think you're going to die. It's like... People are screaming. Ladies and gentlemen, we've encountered some slight turbulence. We'll ask that everyone return to their seats at this point and uh, refrain from using the lavatories. Please note we will be flying at a high altitude to try and uh, alleviate the problem. Also, uh, keep your seatbelts fastened and uh, no hot drinks will be served at this time for your safety. Thank you very much and I'll speak to you in a moment once we've uh, gotten out of this bumpy patch. Speak to you in a moment. That moment might never come. He doesn't tell you this. When the nationwide flight lost an engine, the pilot said nothing. It just fell. <laughs> Quiet. 
I don't want a pilot like that. I want someone who lets me know. I want to know before I'm going to die. I want to know. I want to say a prayer or two. I want to prepare myself, you know? I want to forgive everyone that I hate in the world. Give me a chance. Give me a chance. But they don't, pilots. No, they don't. I bet people who die in plane crashes don't even know they've died. It must be the worst feeling in the world. There's like a whole bunch of confused people popping into heaven like poof. I swear these airports change all the time. I never know where to go. I never... I'm at, are we, oh, no, are we in heaven? Oh wow, I can't believe we made it, hey? I, I can't believe, wow, this is amazing. And there's St. Peter at the gates and he's like, hey, come forward, please, come forward. Come, come forward, she's like, here, here you are, I'm St. Peter, St. Peter. How about you? Yeah, I know, many, many people are shocked. Just come. I get that all the time, just come. Just come, just come. No, I just thought that, no, nah, don't, don't worry, just, just come, please. Just wait till you see Jesus, come, come, come. <laughs> I don't want that. I want someone to let me know when I'm gonna die. Like taxi drivers. There's no person who dies in a taxi not knowing that they've died. Just before the crash, taxi driver will be like, yo! <laughs> ah. People walking into heaven like, yo, dead, dead, dead. <laughs> dead, yeah, no, sure la, we're dead. Gone, 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 ay, 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 ay. They know. Sometimes they survive the crash, but they still think they did. They're walking on the pavement, dead, 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 no, dead. Oh. But luckily we did land safely in Johannesburg. We landed safely and everyone clapped when the plane landed. Yay! Clapped and walked into the airport terminal building. And that's, once, that's, that's the point when you realize you're back in South Africa. When you're flying, it's international. And then when you land at any of our airports, and if you listen carefully, you realize that you're back. Like South Africa, once again, the world went there. Then we were like, no, no, going. That will find just that side. Because all over the world, they conform to a norm, and that is in airports, women make announcements. It's always a woman, always. And she's always calm, always monotone. Always come over that system, she sits in a room quietly, they bring her the pages one by one. You can be in Heathrow, for instance, you'll hear that woman come on the system. Doom, doom. Attention all passengers. Please note, this is an airport announcement. No passengers are permitted to leave any items unattended as this may be seen as a security risk. Any unattended luggage will be removed by security and destroyed. Thank you. Dun dun. Everywhere in the world, even if you go to like non-English speaking countries, they still conform to that norm. You know, you go to places like China where you wouldn't expect it, you know? You think, you know, I see some of you probably think they'll be like, <laughs> oh, don't even laugh, that's racist, don't even laugh. Don't, don't hey, don't, no, that's racist, you don't even laugh. But they're not. They're calm. It's a woman, still the same. She's just another language. She'll come on the pier and be like, Dum -dum. And you know, you know they've conformed. And then you land in South Africa. And you know you've landed. You know, you know that you're back home when you walk into the airport terminal building. <laughs> you walk in, and I don't even know if they audition the people who do it. No, no, no. It's almost like whoever's closest to the mic gets to do it first, you know? It's the craziest thing. L luckily, 99% of the time it's a woman, but she'll come on. It's the craziest thing ever. As you walk in, she'll come and be like, dum -dum. Attention all passengers. Attention all passengers. Hello. Hello, I'm talking to you. Hello. Yeah, all the people is flying cooler.com. The plane is delayed. The plane just going on two, it's going on three. Yeah, all the people must just take a ticket for that one. You're going to have a problem, ne? Just take on that. If a ticket says two, then it's going to be three, ne? Then you mustn't complain when the plane is not there because then I, I need that children now. Then you must just phone the people that are coming to pick you up. I must tell them, yo, I need my plane to change. It's not, and then they start speaking to people in the background. They don't even turn off their mic. All the must just tell the people they are up and Okay. 
Okay, all the people is lying one time. The gate is changed. It's not D2, it's C15. It's not D2, it's C15. If you can go to D2, oh, you can find nothing. Eh? Okay, bye bye. But I need my chain. No, no, no. It's so much fun. I'm always grateful when I land safely, you know? Because people make air travel seem like the most normal thing in the world, and it isn't. I'm always grateful. I always watch those airplane, air crash investigations and see how things went wrong, you know, try and figure out what I could do the next time I'm there. That glass, that glass. You know, just like, I was, I, was, uh, I, was, I was watching the news once when a British Airways flight had crashed, and it was in Heathrow, and it wasn't a bad crash. What happened was um, the landing gear of the plane failed to engage. So the wheel at the front didn't come out, and the plane actually landed on its nose and scraped and burst into flames. But luckily nobody, nobody was dead, nobody was hurt. You know, it was a, it was a cool crash, if there's such a thing. It was, because everyone survived, it was great. And the news reporters were all over Heathrow, you know, everyone was there. And then there was a very animated guy with big ears, and he was standing there, and he was talking, and they crossed over live to him, and he was like, yes, well, well, Mary, I, I'm here at Heathrow International Airport, where if you see behind me, as you can see, the plane has crashed landed, they've cordoned it off in an area, and the fire department has managed to douse the, the majority of the flames. Uh, apparently, the landing gear failed to engage. We, we have mixed reports about what caused it, but right now, we do know that all of, all of the people in the plane, all the passengers have been moved to safety. No casualties have been reported. We actually have one of the one of the survivors here with us, Mr. Wilkinson. Mr. Wilkinson, could you join us over here, please? Mr. Wilkinson. And Mr. Wilkinson was a, was a small little English, small guy. He had like a little leather jacket, a little hat, you know, one of those Kangol type hats. He walked over. Like, oh, me, yeah. All right, all right. Mr. Wilkinson, could you tell us exactly what happened in that plane? And he's like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, well, we was dying, yeah. Flying, and then the pilot says, Brace yourselves. <laughs> then Weez wasn't flying no more. <laughs> and that was his account of the entire plane crash. Succinct, straight to the point. Amazing, amazing. I just couldn't help thinking to myself, there's not a chance that Africans would be that calm about anything, see? The world goes there, and then we're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the South African, the guy wouldn't even be there asking the question, well, I'm here, I'm here, other plane crash. And, and there'd be like one person, yeah, 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 yeah. And that would be a white person, yeah, yeah. I thought I was gonna die, yeah, yeah, yeah. The best people to ask in any, in any situation, the best storytellers by far are colored people. It's true, they've been telling stories for centuries. They know how to give emotion, you know, they've got that vibe. They give it to you like nobody else can. They're strong, they've got that, you know? It would've been so different if one of the guys were there and you know, he is, and he survived, and they'd be asking him the question, be like, I've, I've got one of the survivors here, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Abrams, Mr. Abrams, thank you so much for joining us. Could you tell us exactly what happened in that plane? Be like, brother, you don't want to know, bro. <laughs> no, we, we really would like to know. Brother, you don't want to know. <laughs> well, we, we would. We, we live now and we, we would like to know what happened. Brother, brother, please, you don't want to know. <laughs> okay, well, there you have it. I'm a, I, I, okay, brother, fine, then I must tell you. Then I must tell you what happened. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened here. Because we must fly in and the plane was flying like this. <laughs> Oh, the pilot was flying and the pilot was having all the deals. The air pilot was having like a time to the pilot. Oh, the plane was sitting low, so so like a like so. Oh, then everybody there was having a good time. I was most reading a book near the plane. Then the lady she came with the thing just to say she wanted peanuts. She wanted to give the peanuts. Then she give like she give some tips there. I said she wanted tips. I said yeah, put the tips. Put the tips. She put the tips. Then she give me the great ties. I said she wants to what you want to do. She said great ties. I didn't even pay no money, nothing, but free, free. So I put the great ties there. So the plane. 
it's most it's most nice but I even have most a good time then I don't even know I think so the pilot from either potto or something the plane the plane so much sick like that the plane the plane start to sick start to sick the the plane you think no it's going to be bad but then it gets super bad the plane so much go up then it goes zoop like that the plane go down bro that thing start to sick like ah the people's was panicking the babies is falling people screaming like ah I was so scared I was praying like Jesus please Jesus who you and I don't want to die plane a plane was sick like so some go down you see the ground was coming like that the people's most panicking they panicking the lady she comes she so much take the peanut chips she take the gas you know take my great eyes up so much slip that gun to the cut there hold on so my fast made the seat belt the plane sight and it's sight like so then the plane come down and gonna crash but the pilot is most another old that one yo bruh that always so much catch the thing start the hand break down like this the plane come there slatting donut sunny that thing come with smoke the people get that door they kick it there we slide out like a rainbow movie there's more fire brother people were panic bra panic i thought i was gonna die bra thought i was gonna die it's like wow that's amazing that's amazing and you were in the plane what were you doing lots of plane i was there by my house brother it's a plane Now I'm tired. <laughs> Soccer ball water 2010 is coming. Oh. <sighs> I love making fun of colored people. Cuz I can. I can. People want to be that's racist. Can't say that. No, can't be. I can't be. Can't be racist. Cause you see, <laughs> can't be. You know me. It's a bit confusing for me sometimes, knowing what race to be called or what people want to classify me as. It's difficult in South Africa. You know, you don't know what. Are you coloured? Are you, you mixed race? Are you African? Are you not? Are you, you know, it gets very awkward. And I'm in banks, for instance, when you're filling out forms. You know, and you get to like the boxes, and you have to tick, and they give you the options. There, they'll have black, white, coloured. Indian other <laughs> and All of us are like what's other <laughs> No <laughs> Ego I just went to loon <laughs> other <laughs> I I'm, I'm sitting with the woman from the bank and I'm looking at the form and I'm like uh, do I have to fill out She's like well you know what it's perfectly optional you can you can choose um any of these you actually don't even have to fill out your race anymore it's it's just for statistical purposes I'm like, "Oh, okay. So I'll just skip." She like, "Yeah, but it's better if you do fill it. Just um yeah. It helps with your application." Okay. I'm like, "So which one must I take?" She's like, "Well, you can take any of them. Luckily, you can, you know. There's no there's no I'm like, "Okay. So what? Can I can I take black?" She's like, "You know, what? lots of them do. Lots of them you can. You can you feel free? Yeah, you can. Lots of them. Yeah. Who? Um you can also take um Can I can I take color? She's like, "You know, that's yeah, that would make sense." Hmm. And I'm like, "Indian? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to I'm not." I was like, "I'll I'll take what I am." She's like, "Okay." And I was like, "White." And she's like, "Are oh, you 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 take the the white box?" And I'm like, "Yes, I am. I'm white." She's like, "Ah." Yeah but but in terms of like um, and I'm like no because my my father is white and I'm more white so I'm white. <laughs> I And I love how until about like 98 white people used to complain they were very vocal but now what they do is they just like they just internalize everything. And you know where they do that thing where they trying to process it's almost like their brain is short circuiting they'll be like oh say so you yeah I'm white. I, I, Now, cause I just I I I touch you. I I I I I don't know what the big fuss is about. People always want to class each other, you know. And we need to get over that in South Africa. Like we've gone, we've gone a long way in a short space of time, but we've still got a long way to go. 
You know, we've got to get over it. Because there's still the racial boundaries. There's still, we act like it's not there, but it's there. Yeah, you know, you just feel it here and there, you know. And we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a, there's a black egg there. And, you know, like everyone has that thing, you know. I think we will get over it one day. We will. I look forward to that day. You know, there's no boundaries at all. Because I've lived a life without boundaries, which has been great for me. A mixed family. So I, I don't, I really, really don't see colors in a, in a weird way. Like when I saw my dad, I never thought he was a white man. He was just my dad. And I never knew my mom was black. She was just, you know, I didn't even know I looked like this. Like in the mirror, I was like, okay, cool. But it wasn't like a thing, you know. I didn't think I looked different. And, and, and that's why I've been blessed. Because I've had the privilege of when mingling with every, every single race. I've no boundaries. I've dated women of every race, which has been great, you know. You know, but, but you must see how people treat you, though. It's, it's weird. Because I've learned if, if I date, like, anyone that's, let's say, colored or darker, then I'm fine. Then I'm fine. <laughs> then and people are like, yes, Trevor, your girlfriend's pretty, eh? Then they're like, yes, she's pretty, eh? And then if I go this way, then he'll be like, yeah, your girlfriend, uh, she's blonde, eh? <laughs> no, no, she's hot. Don't get me wrong. I'm just like, you know. <laughs> like, all races will treat you different. If you go with, like, like I, I remember when I was dating a white woman, I went to Soweto with her to visit my grandmother. You know, like, everyone was like, not in my house, but in the streets, people were just like, you know? Some guys were like, ah, and then? Who's <laughs> banana you work with here? like, yeah, you could call it that. <laughs> Other guys give you props, they're like, ah, Trevor, Trevor, ah, my man. Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, 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 ah, uh, you, ah, yeah, 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 no, you are a CEO, yeah, I yeah, know. I'm like, why is this an achievement? Because it's ingrained into people's minds, you know? It is, and then other, and like, black woman would give me a lot of stick, they'd be like, oh, another brother, another brother. <laughs> oh, now, just because it's big, now things can now, he has to leave us behind. <laughs> uh huh. Look at her, just like the hair. Even me, I can do that. <laughs> Shoot, Chama. Where? 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 And I'm like, yes, you can also do that, but that's not your hair. <laughs> and they get all like, uh huh, uh huh. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Even white women, they've got extensions. Even them, they've got extensions. It's not always their hair. And I'm like, yes, they do. They do. A lot of white women do have extensions, but then they have extensions that match their hair. <laughs> I hate weaves, personally. I believe women, like black women should leave the weave. I, I'm sorry, it's, a, it's true. I'm sorry, it's, a, it's true. It's true, you know? I grew up with a beautiful black mother who had an afro in all her photos, you know? I see her back in the day in Jubei Park, you know, with those poses. <laughs> all our parents have them. You know, and she looked beautiful with that hair. I grew up with a little mini afro. I, you know, it's beautiful. Like, you know, leave the weave. Because then you want me to act natural and you've got like this hair that's not yours on your head. And then you're like, oh no, it's the same. Just treat me the same, Trevor. So I, I can't treat you the same. How can, I can't treat you the same. I can't. You want me to act natural, but you have pinned the tail of a donkey on a kangaroo. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't act natural. You must learn, you must just learn to be comfortable in your own skin, you know? Just have that thing where you go, look, this is who I am. Like, I'm beautiful with this hair, I'm beautiful with that skin. I'm, you know, you gotta, you gotta learn that. You learn, I've learned to appreciate these different things in people. Like, like when I date women of different races, I don't even think of it like that. I just go, certain women, I have noticed, are, are skilled in certain departments or not, you know? Like, I know black women generally do have more rhythm. It's true, it's true. They are better dancers, you know? They've got the whole vibe, like, you know? And when they're cooking, they'll just say, mm -hmm. Yeah, like they they just got rhythm, you know, and they've got great asses. They've got like proper like, you know, when you're like, yo, yeah, 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 you do, stunning, stunning. But then like in 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 other departments, white women like show them flames. Like in the legs department, you know, like white women have stunning legs, you know, like that's where they kill black women dead. No, they do, cause like let's be honest, black girls not always, you know, and then got like the dots and. Oh, it's not funny now. <laughs> like, you know, it's like give and take, give and take, you know, give and take. 
and there's different skills. Like if, if I was going to a dancing competition, I'd want to go with a black woman. If it was a cultural competition, I'd go with a black woman as well. You know, white woman, wa oh, water, just like, whew. It's the one thing I'll never forget. Like when I was dating a white girl, it was just like, water and her just, whew, you know. It's, I, I don't even, like she just, they just seemed like they were born in war while they were, but like, you know, like, was, you know. And she'd come out of the pool, just like, Phew. And the water just instinctively just goes there, you know? Nothing on the face, nothing, just like. And like I know, like from my family and black women I've dated, it's almost like there was a fight underwater. Because when they come up, it's always, it's always a bit intense. It was like. And you're like, what were you? Are you okay? What are you doing? She's like, swimming. I'm very like, whoa, okay, okay, okay. It's just, it's, it's water and I understand, like some people, I'm, I'm not even a big fan of water. I don't swim underwater. I like swim on top, I'm like, yay, yay. I'm also, I'm not like, woo, no, I can't, why am I going under? I don't need that, you know? I, rem I remember, I remember watching my girlfriend in the shower and she'd be there and she'd like get into the shower and turn the water up and she'd just go stand there, like under the water, just like, <laughs> like lean on the wall and sh Like stand oblivious to anything because I'd like walk into the bathroom and I'd see her, and then she wouldn't even notice that I'm there and I'd just be like it's just like this room is filled with steam and I, and I felt so awkward standing there you know I just I felt like I, I felt like I should have had like a like a carving knife or something it's like a, it's like ah that's better ding, 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 ding. just like you know it just seems so mystical you know whereas whereas when you when a black woman's in the shower generally I mean I know it's stereotypical but it's true like generally it's not as romantic it's like you know and like they, because they look like they're washing, like it's just like, you know, because they won't be like all up, no, 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 it's probably like. <laughs> That's why Stephen King never wrote a novel with a black woman getting killed in the shower, never, never, you'll never see that, ever, go watch a movie, never. There's no black woman who gets killed in the shower, they get shot, they get run over by cars, they get strangled, but in the shower, never, not a chance. There's not one, they're awake. That's the one moment when their senses are heightened. She'll be there like having a serial killer will come. She'll be like, oh, for nine, oh, for nine. Oh, for nine, eh, 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 Call Shabir shake on his ass. Yeah. That's my new favorite term. I'm gonna go Shabir shake on your ass. Because he's our latest action star. You notice this? He is. This is the biggest thing. It's like South Africa's Chuck Norris. <laughs> he is though. Guys, this is not a story from politics. This is a true action story. A man who was meant to die. Meant to die. He had a few months left to live. Overcame the odds. And now he's back and kicking ass and taking names. That's a story right there. You know? This is crazy. And he doesn't just beat people up. He says things to them. Every time there's a report, they don't go, then Shabir Sheikh hit the person and walked away. No, 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 no. It's a story. It's a big story, you know. Come out there. Shabir Sheikh got into a fight at a golf course. A journalist was snapping photos of him, showing how healthy he is. And then he, he wanted to prove that she was wrong. So he chased her down, grabbed her. <laughs> he took her phone away from her and then proceeded to slap her. But he didn't just slap her. While he was slapping her, he said, you ungrateful woman. While you were in diapers, I was fighting for your freedom. <laughs> Broke the phone. She was bruised, went to the police. Parole board came out, had an inquiry. They said, Shabir, did you hit her? Shabir was like, no, I never, I'll never, never hit her. Never laid a hand on her. What happened was, she had the phone. I wasn't sure if she was a terrorist or not. And I, so I grabbed the phone and I pulled it and she pulled it back and I let go. And then the force caused her to hit herself. She brought it on herself. Okay. They let him off the hook. They said, we'll investigate this. Because it's, it's possible, I mean. Not even a month later, he's back, fighting at mosque, a place of prayers. Shabir Sheikh, what happens? A man comes to mosque early, 
goes in to pray. He needs to leave early because his daughter's in hospital, so he wants to get to her as soon as he can. But he still goes to pray, gets there early, parks his car, and then when he tries to leave, he finds that he's been parked in by Shabir Sheikh. He only realizes when Shabir walks out of the mosque, and when he gets to his car, he goes, excuse me, is this your car? He says, yes. He says, what kind of Muslim parks another Muslim in at the mosque? And Shabir Sheikh turns around and goes. It really doesn't seem like he's a, he's a pr presidential aide. No, no, no. This guy is out there kicking people's asses. This, this doesn't sound like politics. It shouldn't be in the politics space. It sounds like something from, from an ETV movie or something, you know? It has that feel to it. It would fit right in. It would fit right in. You wouldn't even blink if it came on TV and it was like. He was supposed to die. But now he survived. Friends with the president, but then he was betrayed, and now he's back for vengeance. <laughs> it's a bit shake. Bushra, bushra, bushra. Leave prayers early. Bushra, bushra, bushra. Bushra. In death wish part two. <laughs> if you're looking for a fight, you're in luck. It's Friday action night. <laughs> 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 that guy's my favorite in the whole world. Another case, clearly, where the world said, we're going this way. We're going to make movies sound cool and amazing. We're going to get a guy who just sounds absolutely fantastic. And we're going this. We're like, yeah, we're going to go. <laughs> no, we'll find you there. We'll find you there. Going that day. Because we got that guy. We thought it was a joke initially, <laughs> but it clearly wasn't has been around for how many years now? He's celebrating like a decade on TV. The creepiest voice ever. I always wonder, like, is that his real voice? Or does he put it on? Either way, it freaks me out. Because if, it's, if, it's, if he puts it on, that means he's a guy who's at home normally with his family. He's like, bye-bye, no nose. I love you, eh? Okay, sweetie, I'll see you. I'm working late today. I'll see you later. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye, I'll see you. And then he gets to the studio and then, ah, you have to, you know, this is weird for me. Or, or that is his real voice, which is even creepier. Because then that means when he's at home with his family, then his daughter's like, Daddy, Daddy, bye-bye, Daddy. Do you love me? Then he's like, I love you a lot. <laughs> and your mom loves me too. <laughs> she can prove it tonight. <laughs> Who is this guy? And ETV loves him. They use his voice for everything. He's everywhere, all over the channel. Everywhere. Except when they played porn. You remember, sir, don't you? <laughs> so your hand's shaking in anticipation. That's the one time they didn't use his voice. They used him for everything. All the way during the day, they use his voice. In the mornings, he'll be there. Start your day off with entertainment and information. It's sunrise on E. Middle of the day, it's toddler talk. It's not easy raising a baby. Learn how to do it right on E. In the evenings, he comes back, he is, they say, the bigger they are, the harder it hurts. <laughs> tell me, tell me, it's make it down tonight on E. <laughs> All the way during the day, and then at half past 12, all of a sudden, they switch, and they have a woman who's there for like two hours only. All of a sudden, it's her. Mm. <laughs> Indulge your senses. Explore the forbidden side. It's Emmanuel 16. Tonight, adults only. Mm. So I don't get it. Why doesn't he? It's because they're smart. They know that's the one thing that could throw you off. That is the one thing that could get guys just off sex, totally. That's the one thing. Because it's already creepy enough that they have ads with him in them. And if you ever notice that, you notice it, remember. You know? 
It must be really creepy because there's obviously guys there and they're doing their thing, you know, while Emmanuel is playing. Ah, 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 ah. And then in the middle of that, it's like. Tonight's winning lots of numbers, lots of numbers, checkpoint numbers, and that's made a checkpoint of 24 million rand. It's 6, 19, 8, 11. You're like, no, 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 no. And the bonus ball. <laughs> no. You know how creepy that must be? Especially if someone walks in at that moment. What the? Are you? No, no, it's not what it looks like. It's the one thing they don't use them because they're smart, they know. That'll totally throw you off as a guy. You don't want to hear that. Ladies, you don't believe me, you should try it out. Mess with your man, have a good time, you know. That one night when you just wanted to end. Just like, try it out, have a good time, you'll see. He'll laugh about it for years. That's if he's not scarred. But <laughs> like, just try it, like one day when a guy's really confident, he's like, yeah, 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 do you like that? You like that? What's my name? You like that? And just turn around and be like, yes, I like it a lot. <laughs> oh. Your relationship will never be the same. That's the coolest thing in the world. We should use him for everything. He's so much fun, you know? He should do everything. He should make like public service announcements and they should use him on every TV channel and, you know? He should be like Zuma's praise singer because that guy makes Chuck Norris sound cool. Like Zuma should use him. Because Zuma always comes out like at the State of the Nation address. He'll come out and he'll have that guy, hey, hey, hey. And then no one understands what the guy is saying and, you know? <laughs> no one understands, you know? Why don't they have that dude? Then everyone will have a good time, you know? He was a man. And we're like, yo, Zuma's coming in. You know? <laughs> then we'd know. Because Zuma needs that. Because now Zuma's like, I don't care what anyone says about him. Now Zuma is the epitome of swag. He's just, psh, he's too cool now. He's, you know, he's ironed out some of his kinks, you know, he's got the whole thing going. Doesn't make mistakes during speeches anymore. You notice that? State of the nation, we're all there. <laughs> he's gonna, he's gonna, oh, I didn't even make one mistake. Uh -huh. yeah, Mr. Perfect Prison. Uh -huh. People are actually disappointed. What I like about Zuma is he's really taking his game to another level. Zuma's realized that, you know, the, the middle folk that were just complaining about him, they didn't understand him. And now he's gone, he's gone up. When he makes a speech now, he delivers two messages, one on the surface and one underneath. <laughs> Subliminal messaging. He's got the intelligence of a sentient being. You know, it's almost like he's got two brains, one in the other side of the... <laughs> Intelligence. When he makes a speech, you have to listen. Because you don't know, you don't know until he gets to the end whether you're with him or against him. You're not sure. It keeps you engrossed. Best speech giver we've ever had. Tabo was boring. Khalema didn't say much. You know, Nelson Mandela was great, don't get me wrong. It's just you couldn't concentrate because of the voice thing, you know. And then it was, you know, because he had that thing. It was cool, you know, but then it was like you'd hear him initially and then you just get hypnotized after a while. <laughs> yeah, because he'd have that whole, like, he'd start off and he'd be like, ah, the purple. And then all we'd hear is, ah, 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 but Zuma is the first president that we've listened to. They write about him the next day in the papers. We all listen, we all hear what he says. But if you don't listen carefully, you won't understand him. Like the DA, that's why they complain so much about him. They hear him, but they don't listen. Because you see, Jacob Zuma, unlike the rest of us, doesn't conform, he doesn't conform to the norms, you know? He doesn't conform to the laws of grammar and punctuation as we mere mortals, no. No, not our president. Comma, for who? <laughs> for you, maybe, not me. Comes out there, confident, cadence, wherever he pleases, reading out. <laughs> we have and always will be proud members 
of the A. NC. And as such, we are proud supporters of the devil. Lopment. of rural areas and as such it is of utmost importance <laughs> to note that 2011 is the year for us all to party yes <laughs> And so forth. Let it not be a blame game. Let us understand that I, Jacob Zuma, am not a cunt true on my own. <laughs> subliminal hmm? Hmm? it's your mind that dictates you hear what you want to hear Zuma's that cool he just oozes cool you know he's the first president that I've looked at and gone that guy right there is a man you know Nelson Mandela was a super being Mbeki was a robot but Zuma is a man when you prick him does he not bleed <laughs> he's just got that thing you know Zuma comes out and he goes, hey, hey, I'm not perfect. I'm human. I make mistakes, just like you. Now and again, I will make a mistake. And another one, another one, another one. <laughs> no. But hey, who's perfect? I look at Jacob Zuma and for, he strikes me as the kind of person who's on Facebook, you know? He's just got that vibe to him. No, you can see Facebook people. Some people look like Facebook people, some people don't. He strikes me as a Facebook person. He strikes me as that kind of guy, you know? In the presidential office in the morning, he's sitting there getting everything ready. Doesn't go straight into Facebook, I mean, you know? First he draws those squares and windows. <laughs> don't act like we don't do that. <laughs> and he chills, gets into it. <laughs> www.facebook. Come. And Hello? No, I'm very busy now, very busy. Yeah, I'm very, I'm what? I'm writing a speech. Yeah. About the world. Yeah, okay, okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Log in. Username Jacob Zoom. Mm. Mm. Julius! Julius! Yeah? Where's you? I'm here! Shh, this guy is stupid. You. Oh, you Zoom. Log in. Oh, status update. Jacob is feeling frisky. Send all the single ladies. Now put their hands up. Shmam, shmam, shmam. Look at them. They have a mansion and intention. Our friend request. Accept, 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 accept. Accept. Oh, hello. Accept. 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 Kim Jong. I accept. 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 Cut off. Accept. 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 I accept. Hey, Helen Zilla, ignore. Never. Want to see my photos? Yeah. Coming here with. What's happening here? Eh, Julius, invite. No, man, Julius, I don't want to be a vampire, man. Decline. Ish, this guy. What? Obvious, Tim Jacob. Stupid question. <laughs> Coming here with those things. Okay. Oh, Mbeki is online now. 
local check the status. Becky is an African. <laughs> Comment. Becky is unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> Send <laughs> like <laughs> ah, poke, 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 <laughs> super poke. <laughs> yeah, that guy, ah, man, what's happening here? Parak, still no response. This guy is not serious. He ah, doesn't send Parak friend request all the time, doesn't even message. Dear Parag, it's me, Jacob. Why don't you want to be... <laughs> My friend. Huh? <laughs> he looks like he could type that, eh? H-U-H. Huh? For some reason, I feel like this is a great like, portrayal of Jacob. I feel like this is... This seems like how he'd type on a keyboard. I've never seen him, but I don't know. I feel like, you know? He seems like this kind of guy. But then it seems like a finger typer. Ba, 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 ba. Eh, ba, uh, you know? Because I don't know. Like, with what? Like, standard two. I don't think he's... <laughs> No, 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 I didn't mean it bad. Whoa, who was like, whoa? Who, who said whoa? Was it you, ma'am? It was one, one of you said, who was, it was you. Why did you say, whoa? I didn't mean it in a bad way. I'm also a finger typer, but you were like, whoa. Which means you were like, no, Trevor, that's not right. Which I understand, you don't have to, you don't have to enjoy and laugh at, I'm just saying, you, by saying whoa, you're basically saying you disagree with me and that I'm, and that I'm wrong. Because normally when I say something, because like when I said colored people, you didn't say, oh. <laughs> and then now you're like, oh, so. <laughs> so was it, was, it, was it wrong? I'm just saying, because by saying, wrong, by saying, whoa, you saying, Trevor, I disagree with you. I think it's pretty reasonable to assume that Jacob Zuma types like this. He's a 70 word per minute kind of guy. Is that, you know, is, like that's what you use. Although mind you, what you're also saying is the guy who speaks like those whole one. To that, that guy, that, what you're saying is, all of a sudden when he gets on a keyboard, then, then like he goes from those wick, and then when he's on a keyboard, all of a sudden magically he's like, hey gang, how you guys doing? OMG, being president is like super hard. Why is Helen Zilla always on my case? Like WTF loser. And Gwede said the funniest thing the other day and I was like, LMFAO. He's like super hilarious. Anyway, gotta go, gotta get back to me work. Okay, smiley. No, he's yeah, that guy. He's, he's yeah. He's, he's yeah. And there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. Jacob Zuma is the coolest president ever. I love that guy. The most rock and roll president for the most rock and roll country in the world. Going there, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell us anymore, we know now, yeah. You know? We're a country of first, and we don't, we don't look at our blessings in this country. We love to complain. Oh, the corruption and, and, you know, and the crime and all of this. We don't even look at when crime does go down. We don't celebrate. Oh, but that's not enough. And, you know, Zuma does something good, like actually firing people who don't work. Oh, but that's not enough. You should fire them all. And, you know, we just go and we get crazy about it. We complain. We don't look at the natural blessings that God has given us. Like, you know, we got a bloodless revolution that we went through, which was amazing. I still, to this day, am proud of that. The fact that we don't get any natural disasters in this country, do we? No, no, no earthquake no tsunamis, no, no typhoons or hurricanes or none of that. We get none of that. But I bet there's still some idiot out there going, that's how behind we are. We don't even get natural disasters like the rest of the world. Africa. <laughs> We're the coolest country in the world. Only country in the world that has 11 official languages. Only country. It's a testament to who we are. Only country that has multiple languages in their national anthem. Imagine that. No one else can claim that. Hmm? Which is amazing. Shows how diverse we are. Also means we're the only country in the world where 99% of the population doesn't know what the anthem means. But still. <laughs> oh, you laugh, but it's true. We don't. 
we don't, like no one here, 99% of the population does not know what the anthem means. You see it when you watch people when they sing, when they try to sing it. You see it in their eyes, let me show you. Thank you, sir, that was a guilty look. White guy here was like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen people. But it's not, it's not easy, it's not easy. The languages aren't easy, you know. Do you know what it means, sir? Do you know what it means? God bless Africa. Yes, that's right. And then the next part, what does that mean? <laughs> See, I love that. Young white guy's got nose. He's like, no, I don't know, actually. Eh? <laughs> Old guys are touchy. They're like, of course I know what it means. BJ, God, God bless Africa. Yeah. You're like, and the next part? Yeah, God bless Africa. And the next part, ah, bless it some more, buddy. <laughs> you sing it, but you don't know what it means. You know, it's simple in the beginning. Kosi Sigelele Africa. Ah, oh, everyone knows that bit. It gets a bit harder, you know. It gets very difficult in the second verse for some. Yeah, it gets quiet just like that. <laughs> People don't know what's going on. And yet you sing. I've seen white people sing the anthem. It's always fun to watch. You don't sing it. You just like mumble through it. Hoping no one will notice. You start off very confident though. Come out there. Dun, 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 dun. Go see, see, get lily, Africa. Man, Sigelela Tina Le Swap Munina Nun Kandin Chambam and Si Chabasa. Yeah, if you notice how the volume always goes up there. Always. It's almost like someone standing behind the country with a huge volume knob. Ah! Always, especially at rugby games, I've noticed this. The volume always goes up at that point. Because before that, all these Afrikaans guys aren't singing along. They just act like they've dropped their bucky keys. Those crafty Dutchmen. I've watched them. Song will start, everyone will be there. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we jo jo. She cha ba sha. Yes, you come on, Freddy. She cha ba sha. Cornelius, on song now. South Africa. South Africa. Then they lose their minds. I do blow fun on song. Yeah, no. And it did fun on song. Who like a Steve? Yeah, bro. Lose their minds. The whole beginning bit. No one knew what they were singing. I don't understand. And some people, some people have learned it phonetically, which I commend you on, but you still don't understand what the song is about. Like the rugby team, they were forced to learn it, and they have learned it, but they still don't know what it means. You'll see them when they sing, because Saru forced them. South African Rugby Union, they came out and they said, it is a disgrace <laughs> to see a national team that does not even know how to sing their national anthem. If you want to play rugby for your country, you must learn the words. She said, no, but we don't, we don't speak, we don't speak. Hey, do you want to play rugby? Yes, then learn the words. Okay. <laughs> and they learn them, and they show you they've learned them, you know? Because when the camera comes over them, if you look at Bafana Bafana, they're the most chilled out guys in the world when they sing the anthem. They do a million things at once. Shirts are there, they're all chilled out. They're there, camera coming in there. These guys are chilled. The rugby guys show you that they've learned it. The camera will come on Bucky's and Victor and all of them, they'll be there. More Boloka, They're not holding each other, they're holding each other back. But they still don't know what the song means. 
which is very dangerous in my opinion. It really is. Because you're singing a song. It's not just a song. It's an anthem. It's a pledge. It's a promise. You put your hand on your heart. And you're promising something, but you don't know what that promise is. It's very dangerous. For all you know, the whole song could be about killing you. You laugh, but you've seen how happy black people get when they sing. Huh? How do you know while you're mumbling, what we're actually singing is, When Mandela dies, we're going to kill them. Oh, we're going to kill you. Oh, we're kill you. Yeah, you laugh. But if you listen carefully, there's a part in the song where they go, Yes, you, and then we're on South Africa. <laughs> but you don't know. It's not about that, so come down. I see you. All of a sudden, your arm's not sharing the armrest with him anymore. Sorry about everything, bro. I wasn't even there. It's not about that. It isn't. It's actually a beautiful song. The whole anthem is, you know. Then the Afrikaans part comes in, this stem, and you'd assume, oh, that's, that's Afrikaans. No, it's not the Afrikaans, it's the national part. Because contrary to popular belief, most people in South Africa, most people can speak Afrikaans or understand it. So it's the most widely spoken and understood language in this country. So when that part of the anthem comes, everybody's singing along now. Everyone is there saying, well, not everyone. I don't want to generalize, you know, because Indian people, you guys aren't. Um, <laughs> No, no, not in a bad way. It's just Indian people and Afrikaans. Like, let's be honest, they don't mix, right? Like, Indian people, it's like, it's like a tender and honesty. It just doesn't, you know? They don't... It's true, though, let's be honest. And you're going, oh, Trevor, that's racist. How can you say, oh, that's racist, racist. It's not racist. You tell, when was the last time you went to Oriental Plaza? When was the last time you went and walked around? And you tell me, when you were there, did you see Indian guys walking around, talking to each other, going, hey, Pravesh, 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 yeah? Do it for him, cause yeah, hey Sunny, when you got this on my show and scope, you say, bring me bring me shelf, no bro, bring me shelf. See bring me spin his on him. You don't see that. This doesn't. They're smart, so so if you see them when they sing the anthem, they just don't sing the Afrikaans. They've got no guilt, nothing. They just they just stop singing. They'll sing the whole beginning bit, all the vernacular, they'll sing it word for word, which is amazing. They understand it and they sing. Do you speak vernacular, sir? No? You know it's not a language, right? I don't speak Vinayaki, you know? Vinayaki is not a language. It's the tongue of the land. So in England, English is vernacular. People don't know that here. A lot of people don't. Ah, uh, vernacular. Do you speak vernacular? Very strange. They say it like, and in Parliament, they make it sound, and they, you know, they bring it to life. Yeah, they, with, with the decline of vernacular. I think what was interesting to see with vernacular was... This is like he knows the guy personally, you know. <laughs> yeah, Venecula. It's got like a, it's got a cool ring to it. It sounds like a like a black Dracula. It doesn't. It does. It does. It does. If there was like a BE counterpart, it would be him. It would be him, you know. Venecula. Like a conference, and the main guy would be there. I'm Dracula. All the way from Transylvania. <laughs> and me, I'm Venecula. <laughs> From Google, <laughs> I'm going to bite you. <laughs> I love to drink the blood of young tender ladies because it is sweet and tender. <laughs> Even me. Even me, I want to tender. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like the coolest TV series if they made it. The Adventures of Venacula. <laughs> they cannot stop us, my liege. Watch me as my dark magic causes me to disappear. <laughs> ah, even me. They can't catch me, I disappear into a taxi. Ah, 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 short left, short left. Ah, 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 ah. Oh, oh, Venacula. Oh, the townships would never be the same again. People running down the streets. Ah, I'm going to bite you. You, you don't bite me. Ah, 
I'm going to bite you. You then bite me. Ah, bite you. Because if you know, like women in the township can run really fast until they're in danger. Then they're like, ooh. The car is going to bump me. Ooh. I don't know. Even if you look at the picture of Hector Peterson, the chick in the photo is like, ooh. Oh, it's, ah, bite you. You then bite me. Ah, I'm going to bite you. Can't stop me. You then bite me. You are. You. Please don't bet me. Don't bet me. Why are you taking so long to bet me? Ah, ah, yeah, I'm just putting on the condom first. Wait. Yeah, you know, blood transfusion. Dangerous. Ah, <laughs> venicula. Dangerous but safe. <laughs> This episode of Vernacular proudly brought to you by the Department of Health. <laughs> oh, oh, that hurts. Oh. 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 oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Where was I? Oh, Indian people. Yes, sorry about that. Yes, because they do. They sing the vernacular bit of the song, word for word. They know it, you know. And then when it gets to the Afrikaans bit, they just they skip out. I like that. It's calm, you know. The young guys can sing, but the older men, they don't, they don't engage at all. They'll be there, singing vernacular, word for word. South Africa, South Africa. Also singing in blue fan on say hey, aren't you gonna say no no you all go ahead you all go ahead carry on eh? no no go ahead I know where y'all are going I'll meet y'all in front right no no carry on what y'all wanna sing with the farmer sing with your farmer friends there eh? I don't even know what they say sing with them there eh? sing with them sing with them it's fine there eh? no, I'm not gonna sing things I don't know just then they don't sing but they do get caught out because our, our anthem is a great tune if there's one thing about Indian people that is they love their music culturally it's ingrained into them if you watch them closely really closely the camera stays on them for long enough. They don't sing along, but they get caught up. They'll be there. Like, South Africa, South Africa. And they blow fun. And if you watch them closely, they'll act like they hate it. You'll see them. He's watching. And then everyone comes together for the end. Sounds the call. Yes. My favorite part of the anthem, favorite part, I love it. It's elegant and it's beautiful, you know. It sounds like something out of an opera. It doesn't sound like a national anthem. It sounds like a love song. It's beautiful, you know. The words would fit right in on the West End, like a Broadway production or something of a Phantom of the Opera, you know. It's beautiful. It has, you could see that woman singing to that guy, you know, the dude with the mask. She'd be there and the words would fit. It sounds the call to come together, united. It's beautiful. I could see her in that voice, the spotlight on her. Sounds the call to come together. He'd be at the bottom. And united, we shall stand. What? It's been a cure <laughs> No, no, it's not, it's not. <laughs> it's not, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not, it's not. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, it's not. It's a beautiful anthem. And the misconception is everyone thinks it's the easiest part of the song to sing. And once again, it is a big misconception. Because a large population, a large part of South Africa, doesn't know how to speak English. You take that for granted when you come from major cities. But if you look at the stats, if you look at census, a lot of black people do not speak English. It's not their first nor their second language. They speak African languages and maybe even Afrikaans first. So when it gets to that part of the anthem, there's a large amount of black people that don't know their anthem. But you know what I love? 
is that the volume never drops. <laughs> Energy never subsides. Because they know how important the song is. And black people have never needed words to sing a song. No. They get in there and they hum. They don't just hum, they hum the shit out of that song. They'll sing the Afrikaans word for word, flawlessly. And as it gets to the English, they won't skip a beat, but if you listen closely, they don't know the words, they'll be there. And then they get confidence at the end. In South Africa, our friend. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for supporting me. Goodbye.